but you're talking to someone all the time uh, who has an opinion, an you know, analyst, and, and he's trying to generate brokerage commissions. I, I'm trying to be a long-term investor. Billionaire Tesla stock investor just called out a famous Tesla stock analyst. This was a good one. He also predicted where Tesla stock is going to be in 2025 as well as 2030, and it was a pretty interesting interview. So let's take a look. To Tesla. So, uh, so I start uh, in 1970, I come to New York. Uh, I'm in debt, I'm living in my friend's basement and $15,000 in debt, uh, unemployed. Uh, and then in 1982, start Baron Capital. Uh, we had 10 million under management, 10 million. Uh, now we have uh, 41 and a half billion and 40 billion of that is profits. And I've gone from having minus $15,000 of net worth, minus 15,000 uh, to my family and I owning 6.9% of the assets that we manage. Uh, and uh, so it's down from where it was, and I say that what we're gonna ha what's gonna happen is we're gonna be back to where we were at the end of 2025, and then we'll be back to our trend of doubling every, uh, you know, every five or six years. So that means in 2035, I'm expecting to be six times as big as we are now. Ron is being a little bit conservative here. Before 2035 ends, I think Tesla's stock will more than 10x from where it is today. Tesla, Tesla. you got into this back in 2014, uh, right? 2014 was your first purchase of Tesla? So I met him in 2010. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and when I was interviewing, and I say we invest in people, bet on people. And uh, when he was at our annual meeting last year and I was interviewing him, he says, uh, well, it took you quite a while to invest in me. It was four years, actually. So in 2010, I met him, followed it, 2014, after the stock had gone up, I don't know, three or four or five times, six times, at that point, we started investing. And we invested. Why? What, what ch finally dragged you in? Um, well, I kept following and kept going to visit him. And uh, finally, he was telling me, gee, we're going to grow 50% a year in units as far as the eye can see. And he was doing 31,000 cars a year then, 31,000 cars. And ultimately, uh, you know, we had this meeting for a couple of hours in Fremont. And I walked away with Mike Lippert. And I said, man. I can't believe I don't own this yet. Stock was uh, $80 on the way to 200 up from 25 where it come public. And uh, then we split since then. If you were seriously considering buying Tesla stock, let's say back in December, or even let's say a few months ago, then Tesla stock was closer to $200. And now it is well above that. I understand why you may think, mm, you know, I don't want to buy it anymore because it went up so much so fast that maybe it's too expensive now. But you have to listen to what Ron just said. Years ago, Ron was going to buy Tesla stock after it 3x, 4x, and he still thought it was a very good deal. And guess what? He turned out to be extremely right. And today, he still thinks it is a very good deal, and he's invested in Tesla stock still very heavily. So while it would have been better to buy back in December or just a few months ago, it is still, I think, a good idea to buy today if you are investing for the long term just like ron baron you rode that all the way up yep. we're in it all the way down but then back up again which is what we've seen this year we're not quite all the way down so we invested 380 million dollars and uh and we made about four billion dollars so far wow. and we've uh, cashed in about a billion and a half we sold for clients uh, uh 6.8 million shares yeah. three three years ago at 225 dollars a share uh 15 or 20 times. When Becky Quick says, wow, you know, it is serious. But you know what is going to happen again? I think seven years from now, 10 years from now, Ron Barron is going to come on CNBC again and he's going to show his returns from Tesla stock again. And Becky is going to say, wow, again. And we now have 17 and a half million shares. Uh, and, uh, and I think we're going to make six or seven times. I think it's the stock is now 225, 230, 250. I think it's going to be 500 in uh, 2025, and I think in 2030 it's going to be 1500. That's my targets. Very roughly speaking, that is about five and a half x in about seven years. And while I think Tesla stock is actually going to do much better than that, really, I would be very happy just beating S&P 500. S&P 500 is my second favorite investment when it comes to stocks, and you just look at roughly the last six, seven, eight years, and your returns would have been roughly a doubling if 
Tesla stock triples, quadruples, that is going to beat S&P 500 probably by quite a bit in the next seven years. So if we only get to $1,500 per share in 2030, I will still be very happy. Just to be clear, I don't own any S&P 500 right now, but if I had to diversify, that's what I would buy right now. I think when you sold, you sold because you were worried that it was becoming such a huge part of your portfolio. It had risen so much, and I think at the time you told us you wanted to, it was part of your mandate as your funds. You couldn't have one stock be such a big part of your portfolio. I wanted people to know that I hadn't died. And, uh, you know, that's why they still own the stock. So I just, you know... And, and, and I was getting criticized for being such a large holding. And, for, and I don't normally buy stocks. Uh, I haven't really since 1992. I've been investing in our funds. And, uh, but I am allowed to buy uh, private companies, and I have a big investment in SpaceX. But in Tesla, uh, I own personally 5 million shares. I bought it after all of my uh, clients had bought their, uh, their stock. And, uh, and I said to the board of our mutual funds, I said, look, I'm not going to uh, buy stock uh, in, for myself any longer. I'm only going to invest in our funds uh, and in private uh, deals. But uh, in this instance, I think we're going to make 20 times our money. I'd like to invest $50 million. And, uh, uh, and if that works out, uh, then Baron Capital will be stronger financially. Uh, and if it doesn't, I can afford to lose. It wouldn't be pleasant, but I will take the chance. And I said that uh, if you approve this, uh, I'll, I'm the last person to buy. I'm not taking anyone's opportunity. I tried to get everyone else to buy, and it was, in fact, successful. Um, I'm the last one to buy, and I will be the last one to sell. I will not sell a single share for myself until I sell for all my clients. Uh, last in, last out. Okay. And so I bought for the clients. We sold about a quarter of their stock. I haven't sold a single share personally. If we take Ron's 5 million shares of Tesla stock that he personally owns, and we multiply that by, let's say, $255, uh, which is roughly how much Tesla stock is right now. That means he owns over $1 billion worth of Tesla stock personally. Kathy Wood is a huge Tesla stock bull, but does she own Tesla stock personally? Actually, don't know. If you know, please leave a comment down below. Ron Barron is worth about $4.9 billion. So owning about one point. Three billion dollars almost in Tesla stock personally is actually a huge chunk of his net worth and even more he owns his fund also he's invested into his own fund and his own fund is heavily invested in Tesla stock so more than 25% of his net worth is in Tesla stock wow it's now four and a half billion dollars, your holdings in Tesla. That's more than 10%. If you've got $41 billion in assets under management, it's now more than 10% of your funds. Does yep. that get you back to the point where you start to worry it's too big again? Would you sell again for your clients so you're not holding, so you're not too beholden to one stock in your funds? Um, it's a little bit less than 10. Um, I think that, uh, uh, no, it's not, it's not anywhere near. I, I've been very careful about explaining to people about uh, the funds that do own this stock and the clients, and clients periodically call up and say, you know, it's a little bit uh, too much for me, can you sell a little bit? And whatever they ask, I'll do. And I told them, I think that you're gonna make uh, from these levels a double in the next three years, and you're gonna make, uh, after that, you're gonna make uh, you know, to a triple again. So, so you can, I think you're gonna make seven times your money over the next uh, seven or eight years. It is though important to note that he has multiple funds, and one of his funds back in November of last year, had 45% of its total capital allocated to Tesla stock. And that was despite the 50% drop roughly from the top at the time. So curious if you'd explain what your thoughts were on this opening up of the charging stations that Tesla is doing. It's such a remarkable thing. And I think great for the country. Uh, should be good for Tesla, but could cut both ways in that it's also creating opportunity for Ford and General Motors. It's not that big a deal economically uh, for Tesla, uh, but it's going to make more charging stations available so people will be less uh, worried about buying an electric car, thinking that uh, they will be able to charge it wherever they go. Most people charge their cars at home at night, uh, so I don't think it's that big a deal. But it will, this is 4,500 stations right now uh, and 45,000 uh, chargers, uh, plugs. Uh, this is better technology, it's faster technology, it's going to make people... He, his whole idea is to transform our country and the world 
uh, to, uh, uh, to electrification, to electric cars. And this is helpful. I think Ron is generally right here. While restarting deals do have a material impact on Tesla stock, it is relatively small and it pales in comparison to, let's say, Tesla stock 5xing or 6xing or 7xing in about seven years. What's really interesting as well is that, uh, you know, most people would perceive Tesla as a rich man's toy, as a car that's very expensive. The average car in the United States is now $48,000 a car, $48,000 a car. Last year, Tesla cars were $50,000 without a subsidy. This year, they're $40,000 with a $7,500 subsidy, and therefore, they're $33,000. $33,000 you can buy a Tesla where you're buying a regular, and that's like a BMW, better than a BMW 3. And so, uh, so uh, the Tesla Y is the, uh, is the biggest selling car in the whole world. The Tesla Model 3 is $33,000 and you compare it to any car. So this is not a Toyota Corolla or a BYD. This is a Tesla. And when you're buying this car, you get an amazing value. So it's absurdly cheap, $33,000 for a car. Uh, and people don't realize how cheap it is. Run spot on here. And what I really can't wait for is how good of a deal the next generation vehicle is going to be for all of the consumers. Right now, the Model 3, the Model Y, the best deals on the market. So the idea is there's only 6% of cars that are now electric. Uh, and uh, so there's 94% that aren't. Uh, there's also a 2 billion car fleet. 1% uh, is, is, uh, is uh, electrified. So there's a really big opportunity for growth. And yet so many analysts still don't realize how fast we will go through this transition. And Tesla is going to be the number one beneficiary of that. Uh, Tesla's return on investment. So most companies, when they make an investment, they make a 15% return in capital. That's target. They won't make an investment unless they can make 15% return in equity on, on the investment, on capital. Uh, Tesla, when they were making a profit of $15,000 a car, they built a plant for a million cars, and it cost $7 billion. And that plant would make $15,000 in profit a car. They're making $15 billion on a $7 billion investment. Ron, Building all of these factories is going to be expensive and especially the transition is going to be expensive for all of these legacy automakers because they are just so inefficient. It takes a long time for a lot of these companies to build a factory and actually start making money. For Tesla, it is going to be very different. Tesla will make a factory. It will have its investment back very quickly. So fast, in fact, that it almost feels like it's instant. It's almost immediate, really, when you compare Tesla's timeframes to normal, regular timeframes. This is from a little while ago, but you can see that Tesla is doing much better than everyone else. Morgan Stanley, Adam Jonas, yesterday. He's been a big bull on this stock for a long time. He downgraded it because he said the price is just too high at this point. Still likes the company, but just says it's run pretty far pretty fast. Adam's clients are hedge funds. And basically, we sold our, you know, so it's in, unusual that the stock went down the day before. Uh, it, his, Wait, his, are you his, suggesting the hedge fund clients have that information well, if you the day if you, No, I have no idea. But you're talking to someone all the time uh, who has an opinion, an you know, analyst, and, and he's trying to generate brokerage commissions. I, I'm trying to be a long-term investor. Long-term investing, that's what we're about. I 100% agree with Ron Barron here. A lot of the time, these analysts, they just want to generate more activity. They want more trading so that they can increase their commissions. Their incentives and your incentives, if you are a long-term investor, are not really aligned. I still hear them out and I <laughs> oftentimes it's just for entertainment really because I feel you know a little bit bored and I want to see okay well what is Adam Jonas from Morgan Stanley saying today and then I get my dose of comedy. Sometimes there's some truth in there and sometimes it's just all silliness. Either way I'm entertained and I have a good time. But a big shout out to Ron Barron for calling out one of the analysts. When the stock goes down like it did last year, you don't worry because you figure eventually it's going to right size again? The most amazing, I was not worried. Um, but for clients, uh, you know, the stock went from 300 to 100. Yeah. It's now 225, but it, 250. It's the same price it was that it was three years ago, and the business is three times bigger. The business is three times bigger now. Now they're going to do a million, eight, two million cars this year. Three years ago, uh, they were doing 500,000 cars when I sold, when I sold our uh, 6.8 million shares. So basically, it's the same price it was three years ago when the business is now three times bigger. And so a guy could say, I have no idea if it's going to be higher or lower in the short term. You know, Elon spoke in Paris at a conference uh, last week. 
and he was with uh, uh, the, uh, Ar Ar Arnaud's son. And Arnaud's son said to him, Elon, uh, you know, our businesses in the aggregate, LVMH, are, are 6,000 years old. Six, you're a teenager. How can you stop? When are you going to stop embarrassing us uh, with, with your market cap? And he says, you know, valuations are funny. Who knows? It is almost like Ron Barron is telling you to buy Tesla stuff because right now, it is a buying opportunity. And I think 10 years from now, we will look back to this moment and we'll say, you know, even though the stock basically doubled so quickly, it was still a great deal. It was the deal of the decade. And just like Kathy Wood said back in December, when Tesla stock was close to $100, that opportunity was once in a century, not in a decade. And YouTube wants you to watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching this Elon Musk interview, I highly suggest to finish this one first. My name is Matt Postis. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.